welcome to the third installment in this series all about helping you get started on your mosaics journey. Last time we took a look at tiles, and in this video we're going to be taking a look a little bit closer at the things that you can mosaic. Your backings and boards, for example. And perhaps the number one and most obvious choice for the beginner and the most experienced mosaicists is to look at MDF and plywood. And I do generally lump these two in together, as they're used in much the same way and they tend to cost much the same amount as well. And these are so popular for three wonderful reasons. One, as I said, they are cheap and easy to come by. Even very large pieces aren't really going to cost you more than 10 to 20 pounds at a time, and this makes them really accessible, especially if you're comparing them to any type of pure wood like pine, for example. It's also very easy to cut down to shape, and if you're not particularly handy with a jigsaw yet, then you can buy all sorts of weird and wonderful designs online. In fact, most hobby mosaic suppliers will stock a range of the most common shapes that people tend to want. Things like circles, hearts, frames and squares, that sort of thing. For anything more complicated or bespoke, then you probably will want to get hold of a little jigsaw. This is just so that you can make your own and be freer with your designs, you're not constrained by what somebody else has already made. And the third reason why MDF and plywood are so popular is that it is very easy to work with. Wood is porous, it accepts the vast majority, if not all types of glue, and it's very easy to attach fittings to it as well. If you're using one of the thicker pieces of wood, say about a centimetre, then you will be able to use the tiny little screws in order to fix the fittings onto the back of it, so you'll be able to hang them from there. And if you're using one of the thinner types of wood, then you can just drill straight through it to make a hole. Then just make sure you leave that hole spare when you start mosaicing. That way you'll always have somewhere to hang your piece from. In short, wood is very much the mosaicist's friend. In fact, the only major downside that it has is water, and the fact the wood will expand as it soaks any water up which is going to mean that all your little tiles that you've carefully stuck on are going to pop off. Believe me as well, no matter how much you try to protect wood, if it gets water on it for too long, it will always find a way to seep inside, even if it takes it a couple of years. And so it's really challenging to try to keep wood dry if it's kept outside, unless you can completely protect it somehow. And so in my opinion, wooden backed mosaics are really confined to indoor use only. You could make a table for outdoor use, but you will need to bring it into a dry conservatory, for example, as soon as the weather turns persistently wet. And wood isn't just great for large projects though, it is also really good for smaller ones. A lot of people start their mosaics journey by making coasters, because they're relatively cheap to start with, and they make great gifts for friends and family. I find the perfect plywood thickness for coasters is about 3mm. Any larger, and by the time it's covered in tiles, it tends to be getting comically tall, and any thinner than that, and you risk it being a little bit on the fragile side. If you are looking to make coasters, it's also well worth considering those which are used for sublimation, as these tend to come pre-cork backed, which means you don't have to try and attach your own, which can be rather annoying and fiddly. And sublimation coasters are those which are originally tended to be printed on using a heat press. This means that they are already extremely resistant. Just make sure you buy the MDF ones, and not the rubber ones, as they will be unsuitably flexible for mosaic work. And you certainly do not need to limit yourself in any way to just using wood. Wood just happens to be a very convenient material. And this is especially true if you plan on displaying your creations outside. Now, the first time someone told me that they were going to mosaic a rock that they had found at the beach, I honestly thought they had lost the plot a bit. I mean, what is the point? But to be honest, I was very wrong. So much of what we create in mosaics is very structured, you are creating a picture or you're following set lines. This is very challenging to do though if you're working on a rock, as you have no control over its shape or form, and so mosaicing one is more of an expression. It's more loose and freeform, and allows you to really just go with the flow and create something really quite unique and personal. Which is perhaps one reason why it tends to be very appealing to children. It's fun as well as creative. You can't really call it upcycling, because the rock was perfectly lovely in its own rocky way to begin with, but you can at least give it a new direction in life. Plus, of course, it is a great way to use up any scraps of tiles that you have left over, and it won't warp, so it's perfectly safe to use outside. Just bear in mind though when selecting a rock to mosaic that it really needs to be as smooth as possible. Small rocks are fine, although you may well need to use very small pieces of tile to cover them. 
but strongly angled corners are difficult to cover and will often leave a large unsightly gap. In this circumstance, a large smooth beach pebble is by far the easiest. But pots and their holders are by far the most obvious choice for the outdoor mosaicist, as unlike rocks they can have more of a function than just being decorative. These days, frost-proof terracotta pots are thinner and more resilient than they ever have been, and they also come in a huge range of different spaces, colours and sizes. If you do plan on using your pot for growing plants, do bear in mind that a larger pot is much easier to look after than a smaller one because it doesn't need to be watered so often, and make sure it has a drainage hole in the centre just so that the plants can't drown. When it comes to mosaicing the pot on the other hand, that's where things get a little bit more challenging. It's well worth considering using an adhesive grout rather than glue when mosaicing a pot. You slam at the outside of the pot and you simply press the mosaic tiles into it. This will reduce the risk of frost being able to get underneath the tiles. But we will cover that in another tutorial a little bit later down the line. And for beginner mosaicists, it might be easier to look at the pot holder rather than the pot itself as a beginner project. This is because it lies nice and flat while you are working on it, rather than always being at an angle and you having to fight against gravity. And these dishes, once they're mosaic style, are obviously just as resilient as the pot was that itself, and they can be used as bird baths or feeders, or as a display in their own right. Another decoration that can either be indoors or outdoors is mirrors. And much like trays, these are eminently suitable for beginner mosaicists because they lay nice and flat. They do have the major caveat though that their shape is nowhere nearly as easy to change as it is with wood, and adding fixings for hanging can be a real pain as you're either going to have to drill through the glass, or you're going to have to find a very reliable source of glue. This being the case, you need to make sure that your mirror already has the hangings on it, and preferably more than one. A single hanger on the back is going to be plenty strong enough to take the weight of the mirror, that's what it was designed for, but by mosaicing, you could easily be doubling the weight of the piece, which could be more than those fixings can take. Two fixings, one in either corner, should be a minimum, really. Unless that is that the mirror that you're working with happens to be very small, or for whatever reason you have real confidence in those fixings. Otherwise, you are risking all of your hard work ending up on the floor. Mirrors also have a very slight annoyance when it comes to glue, especially if you're working with glass tiles onto a glass mirror surface. I do find the PVA works fine on them, but it takes forever to dry as neither surface is porous. Super glue dries instantly, giving very little opportunity to correct any mistakes. And so I tend to settle for fabric glue instead when working on any glassy surface. And fabric glue is just a slightly stickier, tackier variant of PVA, but it holds the tiles in place while it dries. Either way though, make sure you thoroughly test your tiles are firmly stuck in place before you start grouting. Otherwise you might end up just rubbing them around if the glue isn't quite dry yet. But this was just a short introduction into the likely materials you may be thinking about working with on your own mosaics. And what you choose will very much depend on the kind of project you're making. Anywho though, I hope this little video has been of some use to you. Happy crafting everyone, and I'll see you soon.